Hickok 45 here. You're looking at a big piece of steel, aren't you? The 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. You have requested it. We got it. Check them out. And we're going to fire it because we got some Federal ammo, uh, several different kinds. This is supposed to be the most powerful 45 caliber revolver on the planet. And I guess it is, right? So we have the right to shoot it. And we, okay. And we're going to proceed to shoot some beautiful, well, not some. I don't think I'll shoot the uh, Model 29 line there. We're just going to compare size, let you look at the difference. Well, why don't I do it right now? Look at that. This is the X-Frame. If you're not familiar, this is the next big step in the Smith & Wesson <laughs> lineup. Used to be the 44 Magnum, believe it or not, was the most powerful handgun out there, I guess. Production handgun. And uh, that story has changed, hasn't it? now with the X frames and then other firearms uh, as well. But it still is a handful with hot, hot ammo. So I just wanted to put those side by side because some of you are not very familiar, who are not very familiar with firearms, you, you might not be able to put this into context because I've got big hands and everything. This might look fairly normal to you. <laughs> it looks gigantic even to me. So yeah, it is supposed to be the most powerful 45 out there. Highest velocity revolver. Uh, I think out there. In fact, that's what they call it. The XVR extreme velocity revolver that stands for believe it or not So the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum is a 45 caliber round. Now, you know what that means? I was scrounging around the barn. I found a bunch of 45 caliber rounds And I'm gonna try them in it and see if they'll work. Okay. It's a powerful kicking hard kicking firearm Not as hard. I don't think as the 500 not a magnum, but I'm going to work my way up, okay, to start out here just so I can break into it slowly. So I found some stuff here. We'll see if it fits. I found a 45 Schofield. That's the only thing that uh, that uh, Federal doesn't load, but I've got a 45 Schofield round, which is a shorter 45 Colt round. So let's put it in first. And here's a 45 Colt. See if it fits. I believe it will. Yes. I need to remember where they are. And then a 454 Casol. That's 45. All right. Then we have actually our first uh, 460 Magnum. And that's a fusion round from Federal. And it's, it's, it's a 460 Magnum. It's not quite as hot, though, as this last one, which is a Federal round. And it is called the Swift 300 grain Swift A-frame. Okay. Now that thing packs a punch. I have fired some of those. All right. So we've got from lightest to hottest. And by the time I fire those five, uh, you know, I will have gone through the, ran the whole gamut. I'm going to make sure that Schofield comes up first. Okay. With a Smith & Wesson, your cylinder turns counterclockwise. So I want to put it over there just to the right of the hammer. It's right there. And it will fire first once I cock it. All right. That's a big old gun. It's eight and three. Well, what is it? It's an eight. I think it's eight and still eight and three eighths inch barrel, just like the old uh, Smiths. Uh, and it weighs, get this, 73 ounces in that barrel length. We talk about pistols and their weights quite a bit around here, like a Glock 19, I think is about 24 ounces. Is that right? You know, the polymer guns and how they range from around 20 up to the high 20s in terms of ounces. And uh, we have one recently we looked at. It was an all-steel semi-automatic, I think, the Smith & Wesson 406 model. And it, I believe it was, what was it, 30 or 40? It was a heavy gun, 30 or 40 ounces. This thing is 73 ounces. That is a hoss. All right. One reason we wanted to put all, th all of those rounds in there is to show you that they all work in this firearm. And to also uh, maybe give you a, a look at the difference in the recoil. All right. So to start out with, there shouldn't be a whole lot of recoil. And then as we wrap it up, my hand will be bleeding, right? <laughs> I'll put, uh, let's see, let's put that Schofield round on the cowboy down there. So I'll just leave it up to you all to check out the recoil. I'll give them all the same hold. Oh, that felt like a 22 short. <laughs> now we've, uh, you know what? I think I messed up. Maybe not. Uh, you know, I did. I did. I'll have to do it manually. So 45 Colt next. Okay. 
45 Colt Cowboy. That wasn't much either. <laughs> now let's find the 40 the Casol 454 Casol. All right, I put them in the wrong order. Sorry about that, but I'm able to fix it because I'm so smart. When you make a lot of mistakes, you learn how to fix them. Okay, 454 Casol. Uh, that thing's got some punch. We'll put him on the cowboy anyway. Wow, little difference there. Now let's find the fusion round. There it is right there. Okay, this is a 460 fusion. I'm going to put it on that cinder, piece of cinder block down there. <laughs> nice. All right, coming up last is that A-frame round. And let's just put it on the watermelon. All right, it's up to you to check the recoil. See if I miss it. See if I flinch and miss the watermelon. <laughs> Whoa, some of it came back at me. Woo, watermelon ricochet. So that is uh, basically uh, demonstrating the flexibility of this firearm. All those different rounds. We get all that brass out. Uh, lots of different stuff in there. <laughs> I tell you, the 45 Colt and the Schofield uh, are nothing. Oh, get watermelon all over my pretty, pretty hide here. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, the flexibility of this firearm. Lots of 45. Uh, see, there may be something else in 45 it will fire. I can't think of anything. Uh, oh, I do. I guess it would fire a 45 auto rim, if you know what that is. Uh, well, I know it would. Of course, that's about like a Schofield, about the same thing. Not quite as long, I think, as a Schofield round. Uh, so, yeah, 45 Schofield, 45 auto rim should work. Uh, 45 Colt, and then 454 Casol. And that, as I understand, is the round this uh, grew out of, okay, this, this 454 Casol, which is a hot round. Uh, that's where it all started and they just basically lengthened it and so it's kind of a magnum magnumized 454 you see it's longer okay and uh, 454 actually is already pretty magnum in my book so the 460 is kind of a magnum magnum I tell you though I, I don't I don't feel a lot of difference between the the fusion in the 460 and uh, in this 454 console round uh, they're both pretty warm, so that's pretty cool. Uh, lots of flexibility. Now that said, you know if you have this firearm, uh, yeah, it'd be you know it's fun to shoot some 45 Colt and some lighter rounds in it. It's nice to have that flexibility, but I don't think you'd buy this to shoot 45 Colt in. If I'm going to shoot 45 Colt or or Schofield. Uh, I'm going to shoot 45 Colt in my favorite 45 Colt revolver, my Colt single action, or even a double action smaller, you know, revolver. My governor, right? It fires that, you know. You know, a gun that's more appropriate to the size. It'd be goofy to buy one of these to fire 45 Colt. Okay. But it's cool that you can do that. Now, I don't know that it's too goofy to buy it to fire 454 Casol, because that is a hard kicking round. I had that Toklet, uh, what was that, a Ruger... Red Hawk, Toklet, you know, revolver. Y'all have seen the video on that. I sold that or traded it to, to a guy. I, it just kicked. It kicked so hard it wasn't fun to shoot. John and I are not really recoil sensitive, and we both just, we just didn't like it. So I sold to someone else. Now their hand's vibrating. Uh, so I might be tempted on this if I wanted to shoot a lot of that stuff. You know, if you're, uh, if you're gonna maybe carry this in Grizz country or something, might want a shorter barrel, five inch barrel, I don't know, six inch barrel, chest holster, some, some way you could carry it conveniently. And then you've got the, the gamut of ammo, anything from 454 Casol on up through the hottest uh, 460. Yeah, so. so it's an interesting round. It's known for its really high velocity. I think it is supposed to be the revolver, the highest velocity revolver. There's ammo for this thing from some of the smaller companies especially up into the 2000 range in velocity you know uh you know 2200 2300 feet per second that's incredible coming out of this thing because these things here they set you back these uh a-frame swift they're 300 grains and the velocity on them is uh 750 feet per second at the muzzle 
And I tell you what, I don't want to shoot much, uh, anything much hotter than that. I, I just don't. They make these things called rifles and they have shoulder stocks on them, really. And when you're firing something bigger than that, that's what I want. That's just me though. <laughs> All right, so anyway, y'all requested this. You wanted to, to us to get one, so I did. And uh, I have I have discovered, I've been you know picking on it, of course, for recoil and everything, but uh, it's not as bad as a 500. And with uh, reasonable rounds, it's more comfortable to shoot than uh, the 500 Magnum. If I were a handgun hunter and hunting some big stuff, I guess, I would uh, probably favor this over the 500. I can see why so many people like it and they've wanted us to try it and give our opinion. So I'll shoot some fusion here. It's something. Uh, I, I'm not sure I can shoot it all that well. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I, I've shot it a fair amount, and uh, I don't think I win any marksmanship uh, contests with it. I think I maybe I'm flinching or something, but uh, I think I've got the sights where they need to be. Uh, but I can tell, even with this pretty warm ammo, it's it's fairly comfortable to shoot it doesn't just hurt your hand or anything and yet you're still getting a lot of velocity and a lot of dare i say it killing power if you're a hunter okay lots of penetration so it's uh it, it's a lot of people's favorite big gun and I, I can see why i really can uh for example look what it does this bowling pin right here oh man that thing is loud. That is loud. I'm going to have to smoke some pot after that. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Got my ears in tighter. Let's go over there and put one on the gong. Let's wake him up. You notice it gets there pretty fast. <laughs> yeah gets there pretty fast and moves him around a little bit so it's it hits hard no doubt about it i think it's big round torpedoes 460 again 45 caliber oh man that's why it is so uh so versatile so you know, a lot of people you know, point out things like this, how you can practice you know, with the lighter ammo, shoot more ammo, less expensive, and all that kind of thing. Of course, the problem is you, need some oil. you change your point of impact you know, with the, you change the velocity dramatically or you change the bullet weight and all that uh, to some extent. And then also, you could fire 45 Colt all day long. In fact, let's shoot some. Uh, I could fire this 45 Colt all day long and it's not really going to help me become proficient with this hard kicking uh, revolver you know say i was going hunting uh this just might be fun to shoot it but it's not going to help me a lot <laughs> yeah no recoil at all it's 73 ounces and it's nice that it fires that but you don't really you don't gain much by that okay well let's go ahead and shoot these scofields while we're at it we got five more of those just for fun i should have saved those for the end just to to come down you know from the hard kicking stuff <laughs> let's put some of these on the no let's save the hot stuff for the target let's get that cowboy and that other <laughs> Yeah, boy. The, the one advantage of that would be if you have this and you plan to hunt with it, and the fact that it does fire this other, this other ammo, if you have someone around who is maybe very small and they don't like recoil much at all, they could shoot your big gun here and, you know, just enjoy it or get a feel for it and know what it's like. Uh, recoiling would not be an issue. All right. Why don't we put some of these big boys in here? All right. Here we go. And again, these are the Swift A-frame rounds uh, from Federal. And uh, depending on what you're hunting, I guess uh, that'd be a, a good hunting round for hogs or anything. So with the fusion, as far as that goes. All right. but these are, yeah, I'm afraid I might run into a little of that. You want to be careful shooting shorter 
uh, rounds in a cylinder in a chamber and then going back to the long rounds but uh, I think it's it too dirty all right let's put one of these on the paper target all right I'll get my ears in tight I might just try it one hand here all right <laughs> hey, it went through the paper. Oh, so did that one. So did that one. <laughs> Let's try a bowling pin there. I'll try not to hit the cowboy. <laughs> oh, there's a bucket of water hanging there. I'll, I'll bet it'll break it. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm bad about not counting my rounds, uh, but not with this. I, uh, <laughs> I tend to count. So, yeah, that kicks a little bit, but, you know, it's not horrible. It, it's not horrible. Uh, it's loud, and which, by the way, you can change out your uh, muzzle brake there. Uh, that's why I have this out to show you. You could uh, put a different one in. I didn't do that. I'm not sure which one's better for what I'm doing, but uh, you just, uh, we got, we're unloaded, okay? So we're going to mess around the end of the barrel. Woo! It's warm. So there's a little hex screw right there. Take that out and you can just replace the uh, the muzzle brake. Okay. And I don't know if they make more than that option or not. But uh, so anyway, kind of flexible. They, uh, those also, the I guess, the if that's just, well, it's just a different sight with a uh, gold bead or a brass bead on it. You could put that in too. Okay. The rear sight uh, comes off. And you can mount an optic. There's, it's drilled and tapped, but it's drilled and tapped underneath this sight. So you take that one off, and uh, and you know put put your aim point or a big 20 power scope on there, whatever you want, I guess, and fire that thing. It's a neat cartridge. Uh, it really is. Let's uh, let's take a break from that and shoot a little of this uh, fusion. Let's go over the we'll go over the other hill a little bit. Okay. Now, this thing has a reputation for being uh, very accurate, too. High velocity and accurate. And uh, while you're looking at that big bullet, let me get a drink here. I'm getting a frog in my throat. <coughs> it was a small frog. It was uh, not a toad. It was a little tree frog in my throat or something. But uh, it, it's a... Uh, it, it has, really has a reputation for being an accurate revolver. I have I've read about some uh, people's experience and, and the accuracy they, they, they found with it. And so I'm not going to bench rest it and do a bunch of accuracy testing. It's not, I don't enjoy doing that for one thing. I know it's an accurate revolver. And I'm not going to buy a firearm, whether it's a rifle, shotgun, I don't know, rifle or a handgun. If it has this reputation for not being accurate or has some kind of serious accuracy problems, okay? Yeah, you know, we just don't do that. But I'll let other people do that bench resting and, and talk about their groups with various ammo being an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter or this big or that big or that big. Not making fun of them, I just don't really enjoy that. I know this thing is going to be way more accurate than I am, okay? Put it that way. Uh, so it's, it's a, got a good reputation, this cartridge does. It really does. And of course, these X-frame revolvers do as well. So, let me see if I can hit that uh, that new uh, target over there, square one from ShootSomeSteel.com. They've got some more they're going to give us, and uh, uh, see if I can swing it a little bit. Sure, I hit it or not. That one got it. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what? This thing is so loud. It's so much blast. 
that uh, I don't typically hear the target as much. I'm going to try the gong, see if I can hear it. I think I heard it. Wow. You have to see it moving almost. That's a kind of a strange phenomenon because generally you can, uh, you know, you can see when you hit with any trouble, hear it ring and all that sort of thing. Let me put a few more of those in there. I think I know where to hold it. Those are big bullets, aren't they? Big cartridges. Some people just thrive on these big, hard-kicking uh, firearms, and, and they're okay. I just don't like to make a habit out of it. All right. Let me get over there and hit that thing. All right. I'm going high. Oh, I was going low, I guess. <laughs> Let's try a ram. I think I have another round. Oh, uh -oh. Okay. Woo! Oh man, part of my problem was I uh, I was reluctant to shoot it 50 times just to see where where to hold, but I think I had an idea. At first it was shooting, I was either low or high on me quite a bit, and I had to move the sight around. Yeah, I shot some more, and I got it, I thought, pretty much on, and uh, I may have kind of forgotten exactly where to hold after that, but uh, let me try it uh, ram again. Okay. Got to get a ram with this thing. All right. Held right pretty much. Uh, I don't know if I've held where I hit, but I was holding right square on him. Yeah, okay. Got a better feel for it now. Try that other ram. There we go. Okay, I kind of know where to hold. These, one thing about these big old guns is they do for you, I guess. Uh, is you know you got a big blast coming and even if you shoot a lot there's still uh this i don't know if it's subconscious but there's this temptation inclination to to flinch or to pull that trigger before you really mean to uh so that's the thing you kind of battle with with one of these and if i did a lot of hunting with it i'd make sure i shot it a fair amount you know because uh, i don't i don't shoot big guns like this uh, as often, you know, do it every now and then. I'm gonna put some of these hot ones in there, speaking of that. <laughs> and uh, so you really do want to overcome that. All right. Now these are the big ones. Let's, uh, let's go out through the gong. I think there's a slightly different point of uh, impact with these, but not dramatically. I'm gonna put one on the gong. Oh, get these ears in tight. Hits it hard. While we've got it, let's hit this other bucket of water here close by. <laughs> I think this will blow up a two liter. Oh, I wounded it. What a waste of a powerful round. Let's get that green one. <laughs> I have to go retrieve it. It blew it off into the woods. Wow. So, yep, it's good training. Good training. Whew. Good training. Forces you not to flinch. I think I'll fire some of these uh, 454 Casoles. 
Yeah, this is the only firearm I have. I try to hang on to a few of these and keep a, a few of them on order, but I don't really have anything else that'll fire this. So when this goes back for the e-gunner auction, I, you know, I've got ammo with nothing to fire, but we'll probably have another one in here. We may have another 460 sometime. Who knows? Uh, might try it in a different barrel length sometime. All right. Well, there's a little two liter still standing. Yeah, I took him out. And there's a Kentucky two liter. <laughs> and let's try the shoot some steel target over there. There we go. Okay. That felt like a good let off and I was holding right on it. I'm gonna try uh, I'll try it again. I heard the ring. Sounded good. Boy. All right. Big gun, big rounds, and uh, it's kind of fun occasionally to do this, I'll have to say. This firearm, what well, did I not tell you about it? Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a to go back for an e-gunner auction, and uh, one of you all can uh, shoot the thing, enjoy it. I think they sell for around $1,100, $1,200. Uh, you know, these X frames are not cheap, of course, and you wouldn't want one of these cheap. Uh, the pressure this thing has to withstand. But, uh, you know, if you're a handgun hunter or you just enjoy shooting a really powerful handgun uh, with fairly heavy bullets at high velocity, you know, this might be your ticket. Uh, I, I would study the forums and, and uh, the statistics on these and the 500, uh, the what the Ruger 480. You know, because there's uh, everybody has his or her own opinion about which one is better, <clears throat> which one's best, you know, for hunting or whatever you're doing. Uh, you know, and this one does uh, come highly recommended by a lot of people, uh, partly because of its flexibility, uh, but also the fact that it, it's not quite as big a bore, but you've got a little bit uh, better trajectory. You know, you've got a flatter shooting round that still hits really hard. Yeah, so and then you know and if you're a big game hunter or something you already know that uh, penetration is the main thing there more so than even the size of the bullet i guess in a lot of cases so i guess i'm not finished punishing myself let's shoot a few more of these these fusion rounds i might have another target here hadn't been hit yet 460 one of the big ones and uh and, and actually fun to shoot. It, it doesn't really hurt. Uh, it has, it's much more pleasant. Now, if you get some of those heavy bullets going over 2,000 feet per second, I don't think those would be fun at all. Uh, these pretty powerful that I'm shooting here today, some of these, uh, powerful enough for me, for my taste, and, and uh, for what I want to do. And you still get some nice uh, recoil and that feeling of, firing a very powerful round because as heavy as this is if you're getting any recoil at all you know you've really launched something these are good looking firearms i'll have to say all right let's uh let's shoot something else here we can't shoot this steel it would uh be really hard on it so we'll go there to the gong that thing the blast I'm, I've got two more rounds let me try a pig <laughs> killed the pig I'm surprised uh oh I left the bowling pin out here too Let's see if we can roll him. All right, kilt him. <laughs> what a gun.
Now that is a gun. <laughs> 460. That's a lot of stainless steel, isn't it? So, you know, I don't know what else to tell you about it other than uh, you already know if you have a need for one of these. You've probably already investigated it. Uh, like I said, I would uh, give it a serious look if you're thinking about, say, the 500, you know, Magnum. Uh, anything big like this because uh, this one, uh, there's a lot going for it. And uh, study the ballistics. You probably are more interested in that than I am. And uh, I think you'll find that it's... It's a viable possibility alternative to uh, to the 500, you know. But they're both big old guns. They're both fun, uh, fun to shoot. Uh, I think that Bighorn Armory uh, rifle, you know, it's chambered in the 500 Smith and Wesson Magnum. Help me remember, because I told you in the video, the first video with that rifle, what else it was chambered for. I think I believe it was chambered for the 460. Also, it just came to me here. I think it was. And that would be a good chambering for, for that, for a lever gun, if it's not, but I think it is. You'd have a little bit less trajectory and uh, still have a really hard hitting hitting bullet, no doubt about it. So so anyway, the X-Frame uh, in the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum, <laughs> I got powder burns or powder all over me, burnt powder all over me, I'm trying to say. Uh, cool gun, everybody should own one. No home is complete without one of these. Uh, it's the kind of firearm you want to uh, put in the hands of your, you know, uh, your, uh, well, I won't say that. <laughs> That's the thing we don't want to do. I was going to make a joke. Uh, and, and the reason I'm not going to make the joke is because some guys are bad about that. Yeah, oh, yeah, honey, let me show you. Or, or your nephew or someone who is 14 and wants to shoot and hasn't shot anything. What do we do? Sometimes I don't. We put a 44 Magnum in their hands, you know. No, it won't kick much, you know. And then, of course, it hits them in the forehead or something, and then they never want to shoot again. So I was going to make a joke about that, but so, too many guys do that, so I'm not going to joke about it. It's just the, the dumbest thing we can do, really. You don't want to put this in somebody's hands that is a, a new shooter. Unless maybe, like I say, you put some 45 Colts in it or 45 Schofield rounds in it, and then there's no recoil at all. So... Anyway, we all know better than that. We're supposed to be supporting the Second Amendment and bringing new people into the shooting sports, you know, not discouraging them, you know, okay, with lame jokes. So, anyway, cool gun. Appreciate you coming out. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in this thing, study up on it. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of uh, interesting ballistics uh, information about all these various rounds that it chambers and uh, what you can do with this that maybe you can't do as well with uh, the 500, I don't know. Uh, maybe it does everything better than this can do. I don't know, but uh, it's got some pretty, uh, pretty uh, avid fans. That's for sure. The 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum might be worth uh, taking a look at. Life is good. Oh man, you guys watched that whole video? Well, not one to judge, but while you're here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program. They offer hands-on experience. They also accept GI Bill. You can get certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check them out when you get a chance over at sdi.edu. Also, uh, some of the new targets you may have noticed on our range are from shootsomesteel.com. So maybe give their website a look and also um, the vault safe that you might have seen on our shooting table, you can check those out at vault Also, don't forget to check out our website, uh, hickok45.com. You can find all of our links to the different uh, social media sites that you can find us on, like full30.com, um, the real Hickok45 on Twitter, I mean on uh, Instagram, Hickok45 on Twitter, uh, Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also the Hickok45 and Sun YouTube channel. Um, so just go to the website and you'll find most of that stuff and our t-shirts of course um, you can find our, all of our merchandise for sale there on hickok45.com and man I guess you guys are going to have to find something else to watch on YouTube because that's it that's all I have to say appreciate it